question. How much pressure should you apply to the wastegate actuator on a 1996 engine which is used with an automatic transmission? A, 19 PSI. B, 24 PSI. Or C, 28 PSI. The answer is A, 19 PSI. For 1996 engines used with manual transmissions, the spec is 28 PSI. Our next series of checks is related to the fuel system and begins with throttle adjustments. These checks are relatively easy to make and they should occur early in your diagnosis and in the order we're covering them. The first one, idle speed, is one we mentioned earlier in the program when we were covering road testing. Hook up the DRB3 and once the truck is at normal operating temperature, make sure RPM at idle is within specifications. Remember, the specification of 750 to 800 RPM for trucks with automatic transmissions is with the transmission in drive and the air conditioning on. For trucks with manual transmissions, the specification is 780 RPM with the transmission in neutral and the air conditioning on. Idle speed that is out of adjustment can cause surging, rough idle, or stalling. You can adjust idle RPM at the idle speed screw located at the rear of the injection pump. Loosen the lock nut and turn the screw in or out to adjust the RPM. Misadjusted low idle is a relatively rare cause of performance complaints compared to misadjusted throttle linkage. Checking linkage adjustments is easy and should be covered right after confirming correct idle speed. With the engine off, Begin your check by disconnecting the throttle cable from the ball stud on the throttle lever and making sure the end is not worn or damaged. Then measure the distance between the center of the ball and the rear face of the cable mounting bracket. It should be 5 inches exactly or 126.5 millimeters. If it's not, you need to adjust the linkage. To do this, hold the control rod with locking pliers while loosening the control rod lock nuts. Keep in mind that the lock nut towards the rear of the engine has a left-hand thread. Then turn the control rod to obtain the five-inch dimension and tighten the lock nuts. After adjusting the linkage, operate it to check for binding and to make sure the throttle lever stop rests against the low-speed idle screw after the linkage is released. The next check, throttle lever breakover, is a crucial one. If breakover does not occur, the linkage may not allow the pump to reach wide open throttle and that affects performance. To conduct the check, you'll need an assistant to depress the accelerator pedal to the floor while you observe the throttle linkage. The engine and key are off for this check. If the throttle linkage is operating correctly, the throttle lever to injection pump linkage rod should stop moving while the throttle lever continues to move toward the rear of the truck. If breakover does not occur, make sure an obstruction is not the cause. We're talking specifically about anything under the accelerator pedal which may be preventing it from reaching the floor, such as a rolled up floor mat or carpeting that's bunched up. The next linkage adjustment applies only to trucks with automatic transmissions. The throttle valve cable controls shift timing, speed, and quality, and a misadjusted cable can affect performance. To check the cable, first make sure the throttle linkage is in the idle position. Then slide the end of the throttle valve cable off the stud on the throttle lever and check it for wear. Compare the position of the cable end to the stud. It should be aligned within about 40 thousandths of an inch in either direction. If the cable isn't positioned correctly, press the button on the cable bracket to release the cable and push or pull the end into alignment. Once you've checked the throttle valve cable, you'll need to check the linkage for proper movement. As with the breakover check, have an assistant depress the accelerator while you observe the linkage. The throttle lever and throttle valve lever should move simultaneously as the accelerator pedal is moved to the half throttle position and back again. At one time, our next item, the throttle position sensor, or TPS, only affected trucks with automatic transmissions. 
On trucks with automatics, the PCM uses the TPS signal as one of its inputs in deciding shifts into and out of overdrive. Early or late shifts can affect performance. Now, however, there is an additional reason for checking TPS. California trucks with the Cummins now have an EGR valve on both automatic and manual transmission trucks. And the PCM uses the TPS as an input for EGR operation. The easiest way to check the throttle position sensor is by hooking up the DRB3 and accessing the TPS voltage reading. With the throttle linkage at idle, the TPS reading should be at 1 volt, plus or minus 0.2 volts. Then move the linkage to wide open throttle and note the voltage. The new reading should be 2.2 to 2.9 volts higher than the one at idle. You can adjust the TPS reading by making the linkage rod shorter or longer, as described earlier during throttle linkage adjustments. As you probably guessed, the adjustment will affect the distance from the throttle lever ball stud to the rear face of the bracket, which we discussed adjusting earlier. However, if the distance changes by more than one millimeter from the specification, you'll need to replace the throttle position sensor to bring the TPS reading within spec. In other words, the TPS adjustment shouldn't cause the distance to be less than 125.5 millimeters or greater than 127.5 millimeters. Following TPS adjustment, you'll need to check throttle lever breakover to make sure the linkage is reaching wide open throttle. Also check the idle speed to make sure it has not changed. Next, we're going to cover some fuel delivery items that may result in low power. But before we do, here's a review question. The adjustment being shown here is to the A, idle speed, B, throttle position sensor, or C, throttle valve cable. The answer is B, throttle position sensor. A misadjusted throttle position sensor can affect shifts into and out of overdrive and EGR operation. When checking the fuel system, you'll first need to determine if the injection pump is being provided with good quality fuel in sufficient quantity. A fuel delivery system that is compromised by substandard or incorrect fuel, excessive water, or air leaks may result in hard starting, rough idle, rough running, and low power. Advise customers to be sure to follow the fuel recommendations in their owner's manuals. Besides using the recommended fuel, customers can also avoid problems by checking for water with the drain valve at the bottom of the water fuel separator. Remind customers that to avoid problems, they should check for water and drain it once a month. This is a particularly important reminder if the truck arrived with the water in fuel lamp on. If the fuel system has been taking in air because of a loose or faulty connection, you'll probably be able to locate the spot by looking for fuel that is leaking out. Another cause of excessive air in the system is replacing the fuel filter without filling the replacement with fuel. If you do need to bleed air from the low pressure side of the system, you can do so by loosening the low pressure bleed bolt and operating the primer on the lift pump until the fuel that comes out is free of air. Usually, air that reaches the injection pump will work its way out through the fuel drain manifold while the engine is cranking or running. However, in some cases, in order to purge the high pressure side, you may need to bleed one injector at a time until the engine starts and runs smoothly. In such cases, do not crank the engine longer than 30 seconds at a time, and wait two minutes before cranking again. Also, injector spray is under very